It's four o'clock and uh, welcome to everybody to this second session today from uh, Sean Kay at Easy Build Coaches. Um, Sean will uh, talk to begin with and then if we can invite questions. If you'd like to pose a question to Sean, then the best way is to use the chat facility. Uh, if you move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, generally speaking, you will find a chat button and that you will be able to type a message in which I will then uh, read out to Sean and ask him to answer. That's going to be the best rather than all of us trying to potentially speak at the same time. So um, with no further ado, welcome to uh, Sean to this live session um, and if you'd like to uh, int yeah, introduce yourself Sean. Thank you James, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me all right. Uh, yes, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Sean Kay from uh, Easy Build um, here to uh, answer your questions. If uh, if anybody would like to pose a question, uh, otherwise I will shamelessly um, advertise my products. <laughs> um, it, uh, yes, if you have a question, uh, please uh, make it known to James with the chat or. Uh, indeed uh, put your hand up uh, there, there's a button to to raise your hand <laughs> old old school style um if you're familiar with zoom zoom is a bit of a mystery to me uh, it was a little bit of a struggle this morning um but um we got there in the end so um yes uh, do speak up if there's anything that um that, that you'd uh, that you'd like to ask us so oh, um, yeah. So uh, this morning um, we were looking at um, uh, the new Pullman that we did, um, uh, and I managed to share my screen this morning. Um, not not not. Um, uh, oh, no, we, we haven't got screen sharing at the moment. <laughs> Um, I think that might be uh, over to you, James, if we're yes, screen sharing. I've, I have not set you up as a co-host. I do apologise. I should have done that before. Um, where are you? Not a problem. Bear with us, everybody. <laughs> da, 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 I just can't find you in the list at the moment. Um, where you disappeared to? Where have you disappeared to? So uh, just to uh, just to answer Tom's question there, he's um, he's asked if we could share a picture of the uh, Kartik Four. Um, unfortunately, a minute, Tom, I can't share a picture of the Kartik Four because I haven't got a picture of it. Um, we showed the prototype model at the Myog show. Um, very well received since then. Richard, uh, who is developing the Kartik 4, he's done an awful lot more work um, uh, uh, on the model. Uh, it's looking absolutely superb. Um, he wanted to put in the maximum amount of detail, and I'm sure anybody that's familiar with the Kartik 4, far, far be it from being a, a, a quite a simple vehicle, it's actually got a lot of subtle detail on it, and we really wanted to catch this in the uh, etch brass process. So at the moment, we're using um, a plastic material for the the sides to give it the thickness um, that, that's needed, um, uh, and we're also uh, we're looking at. Um, uh, production techniques for all the ribs that uh, carry the decks of a Kartik 4. Uh, but the actual decks and the um, uh, sort of expanded mesh that, uh, that the cars ran on uh, is, is going to be produced or is produced in uh, etch brass. We Again, like most people, as I was talking in, uh, this morning, uh, with the pandemic, we've really lost uh, a whole year of development time, and um, the, uh, the 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 etchers um, far be far from uh, they're a long way off keeping up with the the trade as demand went through the roof for people locked down at home making models, uh, and also they shut up shop for for um, a fair 
amount of time during the lockdown. So we're, the actors haven't been able to keep up with our demand and other, cost, and, and, and other manufacturers' demands. So like all these things, um, uh, we'd like to get them out really fast, um, but we are, we are at the mercy of um, uh, third parties and the pandemic has uh, not helped at all, I'm afraid. But um, I can assure you that Kartik is looking superb. Um, as soon as we've got the etch brass parts fitted to it, um, we'll um, we'll get some photographs. We'll get it on the website. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to actually getting uh, a big rake of them on uh, Heat and Lodge. Um, that, that's uh, that, that's going to be an impressive video when we get to make it. Um, any other questions? Right. Uh, I'm fine to share the, your screen. Okay. Um, I shall try and share my uh, screen. Uh, I'm just going to share the the Easy Build website um, if it will work. Um, so hopefully. Uh, uh, you will be familiar with the Easy Build website. I wanted to show the uh, the new Pullman that we've um, that we've uh, released uh, in in the last few months. Um, this is our uh, Parlour Second that we've done. Um, we're very proud of it. Uh, very proud indeed. It's uh, been a bit of a departure from what we normally do. Um, in so much as we wanted to uh, capture the end vestibule just right, and this entailed us actually producing uh, separate new mouldings. There's um, there's a little bit of work to do as the kit builder um, in fashioning the roof. Um, I, I don't know whether everybody's aware, but uh, Mark One Pullmans have a tapered roof at the end of the carriage, um, and we wanted to capture that as well. Some people have. Uh, have done Mark One Pullman's but not captured the tapered roof and it, and then, like all these things, um, the look of it is uh, is very important, quite essential really. If it looks right, uh, it is right. Um, as my uh, tool making boss used to say to me, you can measure anything to the uh, to the thousandth of an inch and less, uh, but if it doesn't look right, it's not right. Um, we think the Pullman looks good, looks right, um, and, and there it is, uh, that's our display model. Um, people think we have two display models, we don't, we have one display model, oops, oh dear, yep, sorry, uh, we have uh, the one display model painted twice, <laughs> there you go, there's the other side with the um, uh, quite quirky uh, reverse blue and grey livery. A livery that I'm not particularly fond of, but having seen this thing in the flesh, um, actually looks superb. It really does. So um, we've uh, so we've done the parlour second. We intend to do all five of these Pullman uh, coaches. The parlour second, the parlour first is now released. Um, we're moving on to doing the. We're moving on to doing the kitchen first and the kitchen second and the Adrian bar, should there be a demand, we'll, uh, we'll do at the end. So uh, there, there we go. Put Mark 1 Pullman coaches. Uh, we're, we're very proud of those. So, uh, yes. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, one of the questions we were asked this morning was, uh, are we likely to do any Southern Region uh, EMUs? Um, and it's something that we get asked uh, periodically. And the answer is we sort of uh, do Southern Region EMUs uh, already. Not so much as uh, kits, um, that we put out with instructions, but as an aid to scratch building, um, I, I've done several different units as far as we can with what we've got. Um, and then customers have sort of been scratch building the rest. Uh, so Ken asks us if we're likely to do any more DMUs. Uh, yes, we are. We are moving forward with the 104 and possibly 110. 
Um, but again, I'm afraid the uh, lockdown, uh, well, lockdowns one and two, um, uh, severely set us back on this project. Uh, the 104 is something that we've been trying to get off the ground um, for a good long while. Um, we were due to go to the East Lanx Railway uh, to measure the 104 and have a look at the 110 that they've got there. Um, uh, we were all set to go um, as part of my visit to the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. I, I, I drive up there quite regularly, so popping into the East Lanx wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, and then lockdown one happened. <laughs> so, uh, um, so we... Um, we rescheduled um, for, for later in the year, uh, 2020. Um, but unfortunately, we just couldn't make it happen because of all the restrictions that were put in place and uh, mixing with people and so on and so on and so on. Um, and and uh, yeah, so where we are now with the 104 project, um, we have the sides, uh, we have most of the underneath and uh, bogies and everything. We're, what we're waiting for now is measurements for the fronts. Um, and to that end, I've actually sent drawings uh, to the East Lanx with uh, sort of measurements on there as to, you know, asking them to fill in the blanks for me. So as soon as uh, society opens up and people are allowed to return to railways, uh, the guys up there should be furnishing me with uh, information for the 104. And we'll press on. The first thing we'll do, of course, is uh, produce a, a CAD CAM model uh, and do some 3D printing just to see uh, how everything goes together and how it's looking. So, um, yeah, watch this space. I'm not going to put a timeline on it because uh, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen next. I mean, uh, no sooner does the government let us out, uh, then uh, we'll all be locked up again. Uh, hopefully, once uh, once we're all jabbed and safe, um, uh, life might return to normal and we might be able to get on with these jobs. Uh Southern Region EMUs was mentioned again. Uh, as I said, we, we haven't got any plans to specifically do a kit, but if somebody is looking for an aid to scratch building, get in touch after this, um, uh, after the virtual show and we'll see what we can do. Uh, at the moment, I have drawings on the desk because somebody's asked me for, um, I think they've said a 4TC. Um, now, I don't know what a 4TC is, but he sent me the drawings and um, I'll produce as much as I can. And the guy's going to sort out his own uh, his own uh, 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 scratch built fronts and uh, and cabs. Um, I'm afraid I missed the last question. Uh, James, did you get it? Right. 4TC is just four Mark 1s. Right. Four Mark 1s are driving cab, So that's an easy one to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, very good. Message from Torsten Freya saying I would be very happy about a two bill EMU. Radio, um, and uh, again, is is a two bill based on the Mark One uh, body shape? If so, we can probably help out. Um, as I say, whilst I can't produce a specific kit, what limits us uh, more than anything is. Um, not knowing what's underneath um, these things and not having the castings. Uh, obviously, we've got generic Mark I castings, but we won't have specific castings. And the bogies. Um, it, it, again, if the bogey is a departure from what we currently do, then, um, you know, we can't, uh, we can't advertise a kit for a, a certain EMU if we haven't got all the parts. And in particular, if we haven't got the instructions uh, for, for, for somebody to put it together. Um, so um, on, on that basis, I can probably do most of what you need and it would be an aid to scratch building. Hope that helps. I have another question here from Dave Harding. Can you supply interiors for the old Backman Brass Class 121, including the cabs? Uh, yes, is a simple answer. Um, we supply uh, lots of DMU 
bits and pieces for people upgrading Batman stuff, not just the one two one, but the the old one oh one that they did. Um, yeah, we can uh, get in touch. We can supply bits, not a problem. And what's the best way of contacting you to get those bits then, Sean? As always, uh, through the website, there's a contact button. Um, uh, it says contact Sean. My uh, uh, phone number is there. Uh, I operate off my mobile phone. Uh, usually available up until nine o'clock at night. After nine o'clock, I tend to get a bit grumpy. <laughs> Best not to ring after nine o'clock. Um, and of course, email Sean underscore easy build um, uh, at btinternet.com. Uh, yeah, always. Uh, uh, and if you don't get a pretty sharp reply from, uh, from the email, uh, chances are it's gone to the junk box. So um, uh, do rattle my cage uh, with a text message, with a phone call, whatever, whatever. Thank you for that. That's great. Um, so uh, Dave says, thanks, Sean. I'll be in touch. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're at the at present. I mean, uh, we haven't done a show now for a year. Um, of course, uh, a, a year ago today, we were all uh, we we're all at Kettering. Um, and who'd have thought a year would have gone by with no shows? Um, and 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 it it looks like uh, we might not be at another show until possibly um, what was Telford now uh, Stafford, I suppose. Um, that that might be the first show that we actually attend. So it's uh, it's been quite a break. And during that time, um, or, or should I say, previously, we used to keep. Uh, quite high stock levels are, uh, ready to go out to each show. Uh, those of you that have been to the stand will know that uh, we've usually got pretty much everything with us at a show. Whilst we've been in lockdown, um, we've not been maintaining our stock levels to the same uh, to the same degree, mainly because of uh, uh, supply problems with the uh, with the etches. Um, we, we literally burned through our stock uh, before we could be resupplied, um, and and the fact that we haven't had time to restock because we've been so busy just keeping up with uh, with orders. Um, so there is a little bit of a delay when when people order stuff. Um, uh, we're we're currently running at uh, about one week delivery. Um, so rather than just grabbing things off shelves and getting them out to folk, we uh, we, we need people to um, have a have a degree of patience while we uh, put stuff together for you. So the message is then that um, if anybody's desperate for some models, you need to plan ahead. A little bit, at least a week. <laughs> I know uh, I have ordered stuff myself and, uh, you know, uh, people don't tend to say a word and three weeks later you're thinking, ah, I did order that, where, where is it? And, uh, you know, you get in touch with them and they say, you know, well, should allow 21 days for delivery. We've never, uh, we've never taken 21 days to deliver stuff unless, of course, we're, uh, we're, we're, we are completely out of um, uh, stock, uh, not, not even able to assemble a kit. Uh, into boxes, uh, you know, down down to the edges usually. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the vast majority of stuff we're uh, we're about uh, we're about seven days to uh, to get it into the post to you. Um, of course, if uh, if everything's on the shelf, it can be less than a less than a day. It depends what's ordered. Any more questions? Um, I was going to ask about your interiors and your seats. Are they uh, mouldings? Or... Yeah, we um, we started off. Uh, I mean, Easy Build's been going now for 21, 22 years. Uh, 1999, we first raised our head above the parapet with our bogey kits, um, and it was two or three late to. Within two or three years, we had the coach kits on the market. Initially, we were using Peter Cowling's very nice plaster castings for uh, for seats. Um, but in uh, well, certainly for the last uh, ten years plus, we've been using uh, our own resin castings. Um, with the advent of three uh, D printing, we started. Uh, um, 
producing our own uh, 3D printed masters and then uh, for, for production we've uh, we've been resin casting and of late uh, vacuum resin casting and pressure casting so uh, yeah they're, they're, they're very very nice um, very nice mouldings um, we, we get so the, the seats and everything resin of course um, uh, if you have a vehicle with um, corridor connections and things like that and tables they, uh, they uh, all that is done in uh, etch brass with a with a very nice set of uh, instructions from richard and that those uh, available separately yeah of course um uh we tend to still sell uh the majority of the coach kits um um we, we, the majority of the coach kits uh, sold uh, with the interior separate. We wanted to give people the option of having the interior or scratch building their own interior. Um, so they, they've literally always been separate. The new Pullman kits, we made the decision to um, include absolutely everything. Um, hence the uh, the difference in price, I'm afraid. Um, uh, new production uh, and a complete kit means that the uh, Mark 1 Pullmans are a bit more expensive than our regular coach kits. Um, but we've also made the conscious decision to put a lot more um, lost wax brass uh, in the kit. Uh, this is some. This is a direction we've wanted to go in for quite a while. Certainly with things like air pipes, vacuum hoses, steam heat hoses, um, all the things that tend to get knocked off um, We've, um, we've we're now doing in uh, lost wax brass, and of course it's uh, uh, a good bit more expensive um, to buy in. It's not something we can produce ourselves. We tend to make just about everything for the kits in house, with the exception of uh, etch brass, and of course lost wax brass. We do all our own white metal castings, uh, but we're we're not clever enough to do lost wax. I'm afraid. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Going on the um, seats that um, I've got um, some suburban kits of yours and the seat backs, you've got the partition wall behind them. Um, they got distorted in the packaging. What's ah. the best way to, to flatten them out? Uh, the I have to apologise for the dog. <laughs> if, he is, if he is somebody outside, I'm afraid he's going to kick off. Um, the best way... I beg your pardon. The the best way to flatten your seats is send them back and I'll send you some new ones. Um, but what you can do, uh, if you want to have a go yourself, um, with all these resin castings, if you get them in some um, uh, pretty hot water, um, something near boiling point, uh, oh. it'll, it'll soften them up very, very nicely. Um, and then just put them on the... Uh, uh, a, a flat surface with uh, with a bit of weight or something on them yeah. um, and you might have great success but with all our kits uh, we, we guarantee the kits uh, in so much as and you've probably heard me saying this at shows if you manage to destroy something send it back we'll replace it free of charge um, and if something's gone wrong with uh, with your resin mouldings uh, in transit in the packaging whatever, whatever, same thing applies. I mean, by all means, have a go yourself. Um, uh, you might have great success, uh, but please, if it's, uh, if, it, if it's not something you can fix, send it back and I will supply you with new resin castings. I did get them um, quite a bit better, but I didn't, I didn't get them hot enough, I don't think. So, right. if, you know, if you're saying near boiling point, I didn't get anywhere near that. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll give that a try later on. Yeah, no problem at all. And, and as I say, if uh, if you don't win, um, uh, just uh, let me know. Uh, let me know what you need and uh, we'll sort it out. Okay, great. Thanks. No problem at all. My pleasure. Yeah. We have a comment from Tim Stubbs. He says, I've used your motor bogey kits on my EMUs and the performance is very impressive as well as being easy to build. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Um, I think he might have had... Um, uh, one a little while back. Um, the the motor bogies is something that we actually uh, 
get uh, uh, well comments at both ends of the spectrum. Some people like them and don't have an issue. Some people find them noisy. Um, and it's something that ever since we did the first DMU, we've been working to rectify. Uh, we, we want our kits to be as good as they can be. Um, uh, without being obscenely expensive. Uh, of course, we could have gone down the ABC route, uh, motor bogies, and uh, uh, I don't know if people have used ABC products. They are absolutely uh, top class uh, and superb and silent and um, everything that you would expect from a high-end motor bogey. Uh, unfortunately, they're about 200 quid. Uh, we couldn't justify putting them in the kits and charging an extra 200 quid. Um, so we produced our own uh, using Delrin and a worm and wheel. Um, and we've been working for many years. Uh, I couldn't tell you what version we're on now, but uh, it's got to be version Mark 6 or 7. Uh, the latest one that we've done, um, I think we've got it as good as you're ever going to get anything with a worm and gear wheel. Um, it's very quiet um, and uh, we've changed the gear ratio. Um, I see the comment they would never heard of silent EMU. So uh, yeah, they're, they're probably ideal for EMUs. The latest one, very quiet, very efficient, uh, superb running. And not only that, we've actually compensated it and put it on roller bearings. Um, so whilst we've made all these vast improvements to it, um, it's not as easy to put together as it used to be. Uh, there's a lot more uh, fiddly bits. And uh, for those of you that have got the new uh, motor bogey uh, about to go in a kit or you're about to buy a kit, uh, one of the things that we do is pre-assemble some of the uh, axles with the roller bearings. Um, and I, <laughs> we must put something in the instructions. I get um, I get a, a, a lot of people coming back to me and saying, oh my God, there's bits missing. No, nope, they're pre-assembled. <laughs> I've already used them and they're pre-assembled for you. But, uh, yeah, and as somebody's just pointed out there, you always get noise from worm and gear wheels. And, and that is correct. The, um, yeah, uh, the, the interface between a worm and a gear wheel is never going to be perfect. Um, it's never going to be silent. And, of course, we then go and put a big plastic box uh, over the top of it that amplifies the sound. But uh, certainly the new motor gear box, uh, I, I think, has made a vast improvement. I've, uh, I've now put one or two on my own DMUs. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I run DCC sound-fitted stuff, and uh, that's, that's, that's where the, um, if you have a noisy motor gear box, then uh, that's going to interfere with your sound quality. Um, so it's something I'm aware of the new motor gearbox um uh, i'm very pleased with it any more for any more all right we're getting towards the end of our half hour session so if there are any further questions um if you'd be welcome to unmute yourself and ask that question if you prefer to do that rather than type hmm. So, yeah, if, uh, uh, I mean, the session is about to end. If anybody um, has got any questions or anything, feel free to uh, e email me, um, get in touch uh, uh, well, by phone, by email. Um, always here to help. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining us on in this session. Thank you very much for Sean for talking about his products. Very informative. And um, I hope you've had a good day today. It's um, with, that's great. Thank you very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Hopefully this time we'll actually meet up properly. Thank you, Sean. Hope so. Thank you, James. I've had a look around the show myself and I've been very impressed. So uh, yeah, well done. Well done the guild. I know, um, I know you guys put a lot of time and effort into it and um, this isn't just your one and only half hour session, James. So well well done to the team. That's my fourth. <laughs> <laughs>